Good morning. We are today at West Aber Four. I got given a pile of crab yesterday and I wanted to make the most of coming out, make the most of our opportunity. Because my last day off, and that's what it's about sometimes, getting that balance means I can get home early, spend the rest of the day with my daughter, rush down here. It's about an hour before low, lows at seven. It's about six o'clock, I've got up at five. 15 minutes from my house, really easy, just to get down here, chuck a few baits in the water and try and catch a few fish. And that's all it is. It's just about balance, getting that balance in life, getting out, satisfying yourself. And if you're in a good place, then my wife certainly knows that if I've had a few hours fishing, I'm better for it. And I'm better for it for the family. And that means this afternoon, I can spend this afternoon with my daughter, doing whatever she wants to do. So, there we go, as normal, crab, dongle, 3-0, three foot 60 pound. Let's get in the water. And there's our first fish, from casting out to having a run and playing the fish in, that was a total of 5 minutes and 34 seconds. I'm going to make this really quick because I think it's going to be quite frantic. Hooked perfectly on the dongle. I've had over 50 hounds in the last two weeks and four of them have been hooked deep, but the majority of them are hooked really nice like that in the front of the jaw. So I'm going to get this fish back. It's a nice fish. Maybe about nine pounds, fought really well. I'm going to quickly get it back, bait up, and see if we catch some more fish. Thank you. And there's fish number two. I really love all species of fish. I think each species species has got massive character and the smooth arm certainly has character in abundance with stealth, power. They really are incredible fish. They're so sporting and that's why we love to catch them. And we've got to respect them. So I've got to get it straight back in the water. Get it unhooked. Straight back in. Get that dongle out. And get it back to catch some more. Well, it's a stunning morning. The sun's coming up. Off to a flyer so far. Two very quick casts, two hounds. I didn't set my alarm. It was no big deal if I didn't get up this morning. But I just want to make the most of an opportunity. And like I said, life's about opportunity and balance and work-life balance. I work hard for everyone in my family and I also work hard for myself and it's good to look after yourself and be out. I didn't know if I was going to fish this morning, sometimes the morning tides can be really unpredictable but there's fish here so it's a bonus. And if they weren't here I still would have had a nice morning watching the sun come up. It's absolutely stunning down here, there's a few anglers down on the ledges, they're catching around as well so it's all good, everyone's enjoying themselves. What more do you want? What more do you want in life? fish, sun, that taste of freedom to get away from all the, the, the chores and the stresses of life. So I'm just the same as you. I've got mortgages and bills and family and politics and, and all sorts of shit. And we all need this little bit of freedom, this little taste of, of getting out and enjoying yourself. And it's really important you do that. I reckon that's going to scream off any minute now. I don't think it's going to be long. We're not casting miles, just an 80 90 yard long.
we are so lucky in South Wales to have this type of fishing. That one was in the water just over eight minutes and casting out, being out there, playing it in just over eight minutes. Sensational fishing. We are so, so lucky in South Wales. These dongles can be quite hard to get out sometimes, the barb is really big. If you put your finger on the eye of the hook and then push back in, push the eye towards you, then it can come out. And it's less stress for the fish. I'm not going to fish two rods for hounds, I don't think you need to. But what I've done is I've brought a spare rod and a couple of mackerel and it's just approaching low water. So I've chucked the whole mackerel on a pair of eight of those out for 80 yards. Do get some nice eels here. I've had some very big eels, I've had some big bass. I've had some other really special fish here too. So it's worth a risk. A couple of casts, check it out and just take that risk. Take an opportunity, grab it and make the most of it. I might not catch anything, but you don't know. You've got to try. It's an absolutely stunning morning. Just approaching seven o'clock and it's absolutely gorgeous. So we're just on a little water now. We've had four casts with three hounds, and then that cast. It was twitching away straight away and you can see straight away an eel, small eel, small little strap, span it up. They don't hook up well on a dongle for whatever reason. The way they inhale the bait, the way they play with the bait, I don't know. The wind's just changed as well and that's another sign that the tide has just turned. You often find over high and low water that you get a bit of a change in wind, a bit of a change. I don't know why, atmospheric pressure, but the wind is just just a slight breeze picked up now and that to me tells me that it's low water. There is the offending article. That bit within about two minutes of being in the water and then it did nothing for five and I knew that the bait had either been wrecked or there was something small on there. I wasn't sure it was going to be a dog or a rocking or a strap. And it's hooked up on a dongle. I do find it's literally a 50-50 chance of hooking these things on a circle hook. The tide's turned now. It's really important you cast up tide and let a good bow off. And don't be fighting on the rough ground. You can get away with it, okay? And when the tide's pulling really strong, the bigger bow you let off, the more chance there's a hold in. I've up to seven ounces. I was on sixes earlier. You haven't got to cast miles down here, so you haven't got to be right, right out. I'm only casting 80, 90 yards, I'm not banging it. But we're catching fish. Every cast except one so far, which is really, really satisfying. You can't ask for more than that. You can get a bit repetitive, but we're out enjoying ourselves, doing the business. Let's get this unhooked. Get some more slime on my jumper. It can be a bit tricky. Come on. There we go. There we go. Let's chuck her back. Add a bit more slime to the jumper. So what I like to do, I've obviously got a rig hung up on the stand, pre-baited, but I'll also just pre-peel some crabs and just whip them under some, some crooks ready and it all saves time, makes your fishing more efficient. Just pre-baiting, getting stuff all streamlined and smooth, makes your angling experience a lot more streamlined.
So that's that. Like an amateur, I ran out of battery on my phone and I also ran out of crab. The fishing was really, really good. Uh, I landed nine hounds in an eel. The fish got bigger as well. I had one fish of 5.4 kilos, one of 6.2. West Aberfoyle is a fantastic venue. It does fish better on a small to medium tides rather than the bigger tides. The general fishing is three hours down, one hour up. It does pull very hard on the flood. Um, it is rough ground. In the winter, you will catch other bits and pieces there, eels and dogs. And I've had quite a few blondes. I've had a small eyed. I've had spotted there, bullets, bass, big eels, all sorts. It's really worth a go as long as you don't mind fishing the rough ground. I'm going to add some links to the uh, to the descriptions on the video for where to park and stuff like that. And if you need any advice, feel free to contact me. I just want to say uh, support your local tackle shops. They are the bread and butter to our communities, no matter where you are in the UK, without your local tackle shops. They're not just there for your, your hooks and your bait and your swivels, but they're also there for guidance and information and tell you how to do stuff and whereabouts and, and how to go about it. So make sure you support your local shops. They're really important and they are fundamental to our community. If you enjoyed the videos, thank you very much. Give it a like, give it a share, do what you need to do. Use the information, get out and enjoy your fishing. And enjoying your fishing isn't just about being outside, it's about being with people. And make sure you are with the right people when you go fishing. Because it makes a massive difference when you're on the beach to how you feel when you come off the beach. So as you can see, as always, i got piles of work to do. So I'm going to crack on. Thank you very much. Tight lines. Really sorry I ran out of battery. I wish I had more footage, but that's all I had. Right then, just to show you how I tie my loops to my circle hook because a lot of people go on about perfection loops and this out and the other and different loops I tie the simplest loop there is okay so I got my 60 pound I thread it through I double it over okay maybe three four inches and I simply just tie a loop pass the hook back through feed it so it's nice and close to the eye Feed that line through so it's nice and close. Okay, it's just a simple, simple loop. And then a bit of lube, I give it a gentle pull and I get a pair of pliers, hold the hook really tight because you don't want to slip. Wrap it round, pull that tight, and then the tag end, I pull tight with my teeth. Like so. Trim off that tag, and I've never had that loop fail on me. Okay. So you haven't got a tie perfection loop, there's different ways of doing stuff and you can do stuff whichever way you're comfortable and confident doing. And that is how I tie my circle hooks on for my rigs, whether it's hounds, dogs, rays, whatever, exactly the same. Okay, 60 pound, simple loop, 3 circle there and that's that.